So, you want to know where the magic happens? Well, too bad. My studio is a mess. I have to settle for my bedroom. All the good girls you take out for dinner But all the bad girls you take out for liquor All the good girls, they don't pull the trigger But all the bad girls, they pull it much So, as I'm sure you can see, I'm in bed. And I'm going to be in bed for a couple days because obviously the universe is trying to tell me that I need to slow my damn roll because every time I start to feel a little bit better then I start feeling bad again so after this weekend I am taking a break <laughs> a writing break or whatever break I don't know what I'm going to call it but I'm going to not look at screens and all that other stuff that obviously is kind of hurting me <laughs> so do not fear though I have plenty of stuff <clears throat> already in the can to go out to you all so I got you you know I look out I saw this tag like a couple days ago on DL Stewart's channel and I jumped right on it had to do it as far as I was concerned it was the absolute best opportunity that I saw that I could really talk about the genre in which the majority of my works fall in and that's fantasy yes I do realize that you can't base that on stuff like encounters or shattered which are the two things I have coming out first <laughs> and even though encounters has some fantasy elements in it I mean let's face it it's erotica and Shattered is a coming-of-age tale. So they had nothing really to do with fantasy, which I promise you is my major concentration. I swear, I swear. So I'm really happy to have this tag since fantasy is what I do. For the fantasy writing tag, there are 10 questions, pretty straightforward. So let's just go right on to it. Question number one. What fantasy project or projects are you working on? Jeez, so many. But there are two that are in the forefront that I'm really putting a lot of work into. The first one is Worshipped, which is basically an adaptation of a tale in, from Encounters, Chapter 5, which is a retelling or reimagining of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. And then I have Jen, which is based off of nothing. Totally original characters, totally new story. And it's about a character named Siobhan, who is half Jen and half she doesn't know. And that's pretty much all I can tell about the tale because I have some stuff I need to still work out. But I'll keep you posted, I promise. Question number two, who has been the biggest support on your writing journey? That's easy enough. DL Tillery, hands down, she has been in my corner since the moment she knew I was a writer. There is not a work that I have written that she has not read and given her honest thoughts on. I know a lot of you are already familiar with her, so you know the girl don't hold back. Also, there is the always awesome Eleanor, a true goddess on earth. For real, y'all. I feel bad for anybody who doesn't know her. These two women have supported my dreams more than everyone else out there combined. I love them. And I cannot leave out author to the absolute entire community, even the really, really strange ones. Is there an arrow pointing at me right now? The great men and women who only know me through the internet, 
who literally only know me because of YouTube, who have been cheering me on since day one. I was not ready for that, but I'm so glad it happened. Question number three, what has been your biggest obstacle in your writing journey? To be honest, I really don't have any obstacles in my writing journey. Um, it's the one thing in my life that is going great and is always going great. I make writing a priority. I treat it as a priority and I act accordingly. <laughs> it brings me joy. So I allow myself to have that joy. And even when it's hard, it brings me joy. I really, I really don't struggle. I make the time to write and I write. Question number four, what house do you belong to? Oh my God, I have talked about this one before and I really, I, I, I wanna take that test again. I mean, I, I kind of took it twice because I thought it made a mistake, but I'm a Ravenclaw. And not that I have a problem being a Ravenclaw because I don't, but I'm just surprised that I'm a Ravenclaw. And I was almost a friggin' Slytherin. Like, I am I kid you not, like, 95 of the points was split between Slytherin and Ravenclaw. And Ravenclaw just edged it out. And then Gryffindor got, like, the lowest of, like, one you know, percentage wise, and then like the other two or three or four, or whatever's left. I'm not mathing right now. Um, with the Hufflepuff, like for real, Raven. Okay, I promised myself I wasn't gonna go into a rant about this, but um, yeah, I'm Ravenclaw according to the test. I, I, I want to talk to JK. Question number five What house would your MC belong to? Hmm. For Siobhan, I would say that she would be both Slytherin and Gryffindor. And I say that because she's a hybrid being and she's got like a duality going on, which you'll discover as you, um, you know, as I get more into the stuff. I will share it with you as I go. I'm not shy about it. Um, and her, just by her nature alone, she's at constant battle with herself. So I would say she literally would have both of those and not 50-50 like 100% Slytherin for this reason or this particular issue or this particular situation or 100% Gryffindor in a different situation. Girl, she got problems. Now Talia is harder to pay. In fact, I think if they put the sorting hat on her head, it would probably implode. It, I, it just would. I mean, where does a person who just truly doesn't care about anything, doesn't care about anything, she, she has no highs, no lows, no passion whatsoever. She's pretty much going through her entire life on routine and even not you know regimented routine like you know some people are like they have to she's just existing and she literally she really doesn't care about anything so i don't know where she would go but i will base where she would go on the time in her life when she actually was living and was happy and doing whatever and that's when she was a kid and I would say she would be sorted in the Hufflepuff. She's very creative and very imaginative. And so, yeah, I think Hufflepuff was where she would, would be if she <laughs> basically, she's like walking dead. Question number six, what mythical creature would you like to see more of in fantasy books? Funny, you should ask me that. A girl needs more satyrs. I love satyrs. I do. For all the wrong reasons. <laughs> Y'all know it's me. In Jen, Siobhan's best friend is a satyr named Elijah. And I am having so much fun fleshing 
out this character and his family, his people, his race and as a whole. Oh my God, I'm having so much fun with it. So I needed more satyrs and I created satyrs. Because that's how I roll, people. The whole universe that Siobhan and Elijah live in have been just the most fun and difficult to create. But, yeah, I can't really wait to share the whole thing with you all. I've talked about this book on other um, blogs and I'll link them below if I can find them. But since I actually started working on writing it, you know how it goes. Things change and I, I just can't wait to share it with you all. Oh, and while we're on the subject of more um, mythical creatures, I would like to see more vampires that aren't all upset about being vampires. Like all the angst and the woe is me and I got to drink blood kind of thing. I, I want to see some happy goddamn vampires. Happy that they are vampires, proud of their race kind of vampires. I, I wouldn't mind seeing a little of that. Just just throwing it out there. And also because I wouldn't mind seeing some. Yeah, I've been working on that too. Again. How I roll. Question number seven. Does your MC have a mythical creature that they encounter? And if not, what kind of creature would they like to encounter? Well, yes, we've already touched on that for Jen. The whole township are filled with what other human beings was called mythical creatures. You know, we can't base anything on what humans know. Humans are dumb. Am I right? So in Eaton's Hollow, which is where um, Elijah and Siobhan live and a whole bunch of other people, there are no humans. Well... There's one human, technically, but she's a ghost. So, and she got trapped there when the perimeter, the magical barrier was created to cloak the town. She got trapped inside of it. So, that's why she's there. But there are no other humans there. And that's how they want it. And the reason why that is, is because... Either they don't want dealings with humans. A lot of them don't like the way humans smell for some reason. And they just want to live in peace without worrying about it. And others are hiding for their own reasons, which, you know, it's like don't ask, don't tell kind of thing. And there are some who leave to go out because they kind of treat humans as cows, if you know what I mean. But they come back home. So it's like no humans are in this book at all. And that also makes me happy that I'm writing a story that doesn't have humans in it. Oh, yeah. Fuck them humans. Humans suck. And not in a good way that we have fun with. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm back on track now. Now in Worshipped. Uh, Talia comes across these three men who, and they are men, they are human men, but their essence, their souls, their spirits, whatever you want to call it, are bears. So technically, they're bears on the inside, for lack of a better way of explaining it. We have a polar bear, brown bear. And black bear. I really, really am having fun with this one. We'll get more into them at another time. Question number eight. What season does your story take place in? For Jen, that would be the end of summer moving into autumn. And for worship, that would be mid-autumn all the way back around the spring. So no damn summer for either of them. Fuck summer. Question number nine. What is your favorite drink to have when you are writing? Pepsi. But to be honest, it's just my favorite drink in general. I love Pepsi. In fact, 
I love it so much. I no longer keep it in my house. I only drink it when I go out to dinner or, you know, special occasions or whatever, that kind of thing. And I order a Pepsi. And that's it. Because I have a slight problem with Pepsi. So, yeah. There's that. In its stead, and I'm just going to ask everybody who is watching or listening right now, please don't send me hate mail. Please don't be mad at me for saying this. I am already apologizing, so you, I'm apologizing, so you don't even have to hit me up. I drink coffee, but I hate it. I don't like coffee, but coffee does the trick, so... What I drink the most of is probably coffee when I'm writing. Rather have Pepsi, but I'm just being honest. I also drink tons and tons of either iced tea or hot tea, you know, depending on what time of year it is, you know, or if I'm not feeling good. If I'm not feeling good, I will drink a lot of hot tea. Um, and I will drink coffee too for some reason it's just soothing and if it's the winter gallons of hot cocoa gallons ridiculous <laughs> so I guess the short answer would have been depending on what time of year it is what I'm sipping on but if I had my way it would be vats and vats and vats of Pepsi they used to call me Pepsi I drank so much Pepsi and it wasn't because I was bubbly and chocolate and effervescent no it's because I drank that shit so much it wasn't because I was cool and satisfying even though I am it was because I drank it that much my name got slid to the side and I was called Pepsi okay I'll be, I, I, again I'm sorry I don't feel good so I rant Number 10, if granted the wish to spend the afternoon with your favorite fantasy writer, who would it be and why? It would be Elizabeth Amber. I love Elizabeth Amber. She created the Lords of Seder series. <laughs> love Seders. I have read those books. Every book, reread those books, and read those books again <laughs> because I love them so much. And my favorite book of the series is Rain. Whew. I would have given anything to Ben Jordan. Okay? Yes. Love me some Rain. You hear me? All right. I love this series so much that I actually took the first book and I wrote a pilot episode for it and a couple of treatments for the rest of the book to be, you know, a series, a mini series, not something that would last forever, just, you know, go through maybe five or six episodes per book. And at least that's where I landed on the first book. It's like six episodes. That's how much I love it. And I swear to you, I'm going to pitch it to HBO. Well, wait, no, no, no. I changed my mind about that. I'm going to pitch it to Netflix. Because HBO likes to fuck up the last season of stuff. And I, I, I'm not giving them a chance to fuck up my satyrs, man. But that's how much I love them. That's how much I love those books. Are they the greatest books ever written? No, they're not. But they are entertaining to me, and I love them, and I want to sit with her and pick her brain. I love her. I love her. Well, that's another tag down, and so many more to go. But before we go, I want to give a big shout-out to my newest patron. He hasn't been a part of my Patreon a solid month yet. But I am so happy to have him there. And I love how active he is and how the res his responses are to my craziness. Thank you, Adam. 
looking forward to giving you more content, more crazy, more me. He's on AuthorTube as well. So I left a link to his channel below. Be sure to check his channel out when you get a moment if you haven't already. And until next time, you know what to do. I'm one of a kind, there ain't no one like me. So I define it's the real damn thing. Don't be wasting any time, I got somewhere to be. Always on the grind, yeah, you know me. All the crown will be mine, you can call me king. A matter of time for you all love me. Finally at my prime, right where I wanna be. I'm one of a kind, there ain't no one like me.